Good morning, YouTubers. I want to talk to you today about Christians and the Great Tribulation. This is Steve Bradley coming to you from the God Loves People YouTube channel, and we're discussing the book of Revelation, ch Revelation chapter 13. The GT, that is short for Great Tribulation, uh, will be the worst by far of any persecution that any Christian has ever endured. Jesus put it like this. He said, For then there will be great tribulation, such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. And then he said, Unless those days had been cut short, no life, in the original that's no flesh, would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, that is Christians, those days will be cut short. Now, Revelation 13 records the rise of the Antichrist, that is, the beast and the false prophet at the dragon's command, and the result for Christians. In 13.7, it says it was also given to the Antichrist to make war with the saints, that's the Christians, and to overcome them in authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. Everyone is under his sway. Everyone is under his power. Now this is a truly terrible time. There is nothing like it before or after. So here are some of the main features as Revelation lays them out. The first one is intense persecution. Revelation 13.10 tells us that if anyone is destined for captivity, to captivity he goes. If anyone kills with a sword, with the sword he must be killed. Here is the perseverance and the faith of the saints. Resistance, as we remember from Star Trek, is futile. In other words, imprisonment, death, resistance is met by execution. It is a violent, cruel time, and there is no respite until the end except for what we will see in later chapters. If you look at Revelation 13, verse 15, and you'll see it was given to the false prophet to give breath to the image of the beast. That's an idol. So that the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. We don't know whether this is a robot or something even more lifelike. The second thing that's going to happen, besides intense persecution, is economic and religious pressure. In chapter 13, verse 16, it says the false prophet causes all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, and he provides that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has that mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. So if you don't take the mark, you can't buy or sell. If you take the mark, you've declared your eternal allegiance to the dragon and the Antichrist, and you have no hope. So it's your choice. You can live now, enjoy what's left of your life, or live forever. And the choices of that day are stark and very clear. So this is what the final three and a half years of life before Christ returns is like. And Jesus said that once all this begins, if you're in Israel, you're in Jerusalem, you're in Judea, your only hope is to run. Don't wait. Don't stop. Run. Matthew chapter 24 verses 15 to 22 detail what to do and how to handle that. And then if you read Revelation chapter 12, you'll see that Although the dragon makes every effort to capture the people who are running, he fails. So if you're in that time and you're struggling with what to do, get out. Don't wait. So the next question that comes up is this. Am I powerless if I'm there then? What do I do? Well, you're not powerless. The first thing you have to do is to refocus your thinking. Since if you are a believer, you will almost certainly pay with your life for your faith. It's going to cost you your life. Just 
put that as a part of the equation and figure that that's what's going to happen. And then you have to finally ask yourself the question, what is really worth it? Is it worth it to worship God and have my life destroyed here? Or do I worship the devil? And do I live here and be destroyed for all eternity? That's your choice. Jesus said it like this. He said, for what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What is it worth to you to keep your soul? What is it worth to you to live forever? That's the question. And if you can answer the question and say, my soul is the most important, and you then decide to overcome, you can. Interestingly, Jesus makes many promises to the overcomers in Revelation. He makes a series of promises to the people in the seven churches. This kind of leads me to believe that the seven churches exist not only as real churches at the beginning of the Christian world, the church age, but also as symbolic churches at the end of the church age because he talks about a time of tribulation specifically in, in the sixth church in Philadelphia. So Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. And of course, that represents eternal life. To Revel uh, Revelation 2, 11, to the church at Smyrna, He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. The second death is the death that you die when you are thrown into the lake of fire for all eternity. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone and a new name written on the stone, which no one knows but he who receives it. We're not certain what that is, but the hidden manna is the food of God. Revelation chapter 2, verses 26 to 27. He who overcomes and keeps my deeds until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of the potter are broken to pieces, as I also have received authority from my Father. And we see that actually happening in Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. He who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments. White garments are representative of righteousness, and of godliness, and of holiness. And I will not erase his name from the book of life, and I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Revelation 3.12 He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it any more. And I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and my new name. If you have the name of God written on you, that pretty much indicates that you're never going to take the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. He who overcomes, I will grant to him. Now listen to this. This is so marvelous. I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. You will join Jesus Christ if you overcome. You will join him on his throne. You will reign with him. You will rule with him. He will be yours and you will be his forever. The alternative is the lake of fire. And after each promise, Jesus says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He says this because he wants everyone to know that despite all the difficulties, he is on our side strengthening us so that we can overcome. Here are some more of the promises to overcomers in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 through 11. John says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation, the power, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ, his Messiah, have come. For the accuser of our brethren, Satan, that is, has been thrown down, he who accuses them before our God day and night. And they, that is the Christians, overcame him 
because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony, and they did not love their life even when faced with death. What powerful words. What men and women of God will stand in those days of darkness and difficulty. Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. He who overcomes, listen to this, shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. What can you have more than that? There is nothing of value compared to that. Now the message in all these passages is twofold. Number one, God is on your side. He will help you. You can overcome. Trust him. Let him give you his strength and power. Don't give in. Number two, eternity is coming and with it ultimate victory. If you stand with him, you cannot lose. The rewards are greater than anything that you can imagine. Who knows what God has prepared for him who waits for him? Who knows what God has prepared for him who serves him? Who knows what God has prepared for you? It's infinite. It's greater than anything in the universe that has ever happened. And it can be yours as an overcomer. God bless you. I hope you heed these words. I hope you hear these words. And if I am for some strange reason talking to someone who lives in that terrible time, I pray for you. I pray that God will bless you. And I pray that you will be one of the great overcomers in those days. Now more about this material in the next study. God bless you. This is Steve Bradley coming to you from the God Loves People YouTube channel. And I hope God gives you a wonderful day.